Hey guys, today we're going to be talking about the Kingdom Protista. Y'all might have heard of them as Protus. Now we're moving out of the realm of Prokaryotes and into the realm of Eukaryotes. So, let's start with an introduction video, but you do need to take notes on it. So check it out. Of all the kingdoms of life, Kingdom Protista is perhaps one of the most diverse and interesting. Kingdom Protista spans from single-celled organisms with various means of locomotion and obtaining energy to huge kelp, hundreds of feet in length, that create expansive underwater forests that are home to a wide variety of marine life. But what do these diverse forms of life have in common? First, the cells of all protists have a nucleus and other complex organelles unlike the prokaryotes of the domains archaea and bacteria, which have neither nuclei or complex organelles. Secondly, all the members of Kingdom Protista have one or more characteristics that prevent them from being classified in Kingdom Fungi, Animalia, or Plantae. For example, though there are protists that bear a striking resemblance to fungi, molecular analysis reveals that the cell walls of these protists are made up of cellulose, not the chitin found in all fungi. Another example is that, though a form of green algae now classified in Kingdom Protista is believed to have given rise to the members of Kingdom Plantae, the method of reproduction nevertheless differs significantly between algae and plants. Finally, though there are animal-like protists which are believed to have given rise to all the larger organisms found in Kingdom Animalia, these single-celled protists aren't classified as animals simply because, by definition, animals are multicellular. Various modes of nutrition are represented in Kingdom Protista. The algae of Kingdom Protista are autotrophs that trap solar energy and convert it to chemical energy through photosynthesis. Predatory protists like amoeba and paramecium are heterotrophs that obtain energy and nutrients by capturing and ingesting prey. Many fungi-like protists are saprotrophs, which absorb nutrients from dead or decaying organic matter, while a variety of protists are parasites. As alluded to earlier, the ancestors of modern protists are believed to have given rise to fungi, plants, and animals. To the confusion of taxonomists, many protists, such as Euglena, fit equally well into animal-like or plant-like categories. Euglena, for example, have photoreceptors and can swim toward a stimulus, features commonly associated with animals. But they use these abilities to seek light levels appropriate for photosynthesis a process associated with plants. Thus, protistin taxonomy is still the subject of revision and controversy. Here we group members of the kingdom protista into three categories, the fungus-like slime and water molds, animal-like protozoa, and the plant-like unicellular and multicellular algae. Okay. So, again, we're not talking about the eubacteria, and we're not talking about the archibacteria, we're talking about protista, the kingdom protista with the protus. They are eukaryotic, they are unicellular and multicellular, but they don't fit into either plantae, animalia, or fungi. Again, this is sort of a catch-all group down here, but we do think that they gave rise to all of these. So they are the ancestors of all of these. Okay. So let's check out characteristics. We've got the Kingdom Protista, and we've got in here, we've got unicellular and multicellular. Next, we've got the eukaryotes, which means they have a nucleus and organized organelles. Okay, there's a large amount of biodiversity, because remember, this is the catch-all bag. This is the, we don't know where to put you. So it's going into Protista. Yes, totally into Protista. Okay. 
Okay, they do do sexual and asexual reproduction. They also are classified by their energy attainment, how they actually get their energy. Okay, so the kingdom where they don't fit anywhere else. Protista means the very first. Remember, they are going to be the very first eukaryotes that gave rise to all of the other eukaryotes that we've seen. There are somewhat of 80 odd groups or so that have independent evolutionary histories as far back as 2 billion years. Independent. That means they're not related. So, so we consider them a group of more convenience rather than kinship because, again, they're the kingdom where they don't fit anywhere else. So we're still working on it. Classification. We've got our animal-like protists and our, uh, which are heterotrophs and parasites. We've got our plant-like protists that are photosynthetic. And we've got our fungus-like protists that are saprophytes. They absorb nutrients from dead and decaying and organic matter. So, we'll be looking at these different guys all the way through the next weeks or two. So, remember, large biodiversity because they don't fit anywhere else. So, bye for now.